Hey, everyone. <laughs> hey, we got Lola barking now. Hi, everyone. Hey, Ben. Um, it's Rita and her barky dogs, barky corgis, Teddy, Benji, and now Miss Lola Falana. Um, and we're here for Cricket Chat. Hope that you can make it too. Um, if not, you might be catching this on the replay and that's fine too. Uh, or maybe you watch both. That would be great. Anyway, how are you all? I wanted to, um, to give you a couple of news bits before we get started. Today we're going to be making a fairly simple card from... Um, from Design Space. It's actually from a Rob and Bob image set. But I wanted to uh, to also talk about envelopes because we started doing that yesterday. And um, I want to show you a little trick that my friend Holly uh, reminded me about. I totally didn't think about this. And maybe you did, but I didn't. And it's a super cool trick that um, is going to save you time with the adding score lines. So um, we're going to do that. But before I start, I wanted to remind you that this Saturday night, which is normally date night, is going to be um, our monthly Zoom call. I need to get in touch with my friend Lynn so we can set that up. And I will post a link It'll be at the same time, which is 7 o'clock um, Eastern. And thankfully, because Lynn is helping us, uh, we're able to have it for um, less, more than 40 minutes. Because before, uh, because I didn't sign up, or I, I couldn't sign up for a Zoom business, whatever, account, um, then I, I, our friend Lynn... Su suggested that she set it up, which is great. Okay, um, so that is Saturday. Also, as I was thinking about it, um, I've just been super busy here, as you probably know. We just uh, rescued a dog, an eight-year-old corgi female named Lola, and I've been going back and forth to the vet like every day so that I can uh, get her straightened out. She has, she may have something called Addison's disease. And so um, because of that, I haven't been able to um, set up the joy uh, giveaway or July joy giveaway, but never fear. We will have it in July. I'm looking at the calendar and I think what I'll do is I'll set it up so that it starts on Sunday, which reminder is Cheer Up the Lonely Day, National Cheer Up the Lonely Day. So um, it will it will be available probably at midnight on Saturday night or Sunday, whatever you call that. Midnight Saturday night, I guess. Yeah. And um, it will run for two weeks. It'll probably end around the 24th. And I think I'm trying to figure out if I should uh, announce it on date night or during the week, like on a cricket chat. If anybody has some thoughts on that, let me know. Okay. Uh, also, just one more reminder. I'm told I have to remind you every single time. If you like what you see and hear on this program, would you consider um, supporting me either by buying through my affiliate links, which are always listed in the description of our videos, or um, and or uh, through Patreon or Facebook. Facebook, it's uh, probably because if you're watching from Facebook, it's only $5. It's a monthly thing, and it's called Facebook Fans. I think you can find it on my page. And then on Patreon, you can find me on uh, Patreon at Miss Rita to the Rescue 1. 
not sure why they put that one there. But anyway, um, all right, let's get on to it. So today I thought that we would work on this really adorable card. It is um, from our friends Rob and Bob, and this it comes with the envelope and everything. Now, when it... Um, yeah, something different. I think that I, I kind of agree about that, Emmy. So probably do it on a cricket chat. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, okay, so Rob and Bob, if you're new to design space or cricketing, Rob and Bob is one of the designers that is designing within design space. Now, this is kind of a little bit important to know because at one point, some of these designers, um, like Lori Whitlock and like Dreaming Tree, and there are others, at one point they were designing for Cricut. And so you could find their designs in design space. Um, Rob and Bob never, I don't think... Uh, they've ever ventured outside of design space, so um, all of their all of their designs are um, are in design space. So if you ever wonder, gee, why can't I find this Lori Whitlock file in design space? There are some that if you purchase them, um, they you, they would be in design space, or there are others that you have to buy straight from her shop which is shop.lauriewidlock.com, um, or the same holds true for Dreaming Tree, which is at 3D SVG. I did a little research on Rob and Bob, and they're actually out of New York City, and they're kind of an art studio. So um, I don't think their major form of revenue is SVG so that they do this as sort of a side thing to help with design space. So that's good news for us because that means you don't have to pay um, extra for the file. Okay. So um, I also want to show you that we are going to, let me just head on over to svg.com uh, dreaming tree so dreaming tree just came out with another one of their new free gift items so that you know what this is is that like every three weeks or so they come out with this free gift and it's usually three files and like usually can you know, one card and one 3D item and then another item. So this one, out, it just came out. It's called, um, I don't know, Summer, Sweet Summertime SVG Bundle. Now you can get this for free, uh, but you have to spend nine ninety eight in their shop. And then once you do that, you would type in, you wouldn't put it in your bag. You would type in free gift into the coupon code and you would get it. Um, now it's not hard to spend nine ninety five at Dreaming Tree because here you go. These are all of the most recent files, and this is actually a file we're going to do tomorrow. So I thought I would mention this now because if you want to pick up this this adorable file that we're doing tomorrow, which is a beach pail, um, you might not have purchased it yet and you could probably buy it either as a set which over here it's $6.99 and includes the sandcastle which we are going to do in August and a cute little card a summertime party card um, and then if you purchase this $6.99 and then make another $3 purchase um, you can then get the free gift okay so we are doing the pale tomorrow okay and it is uh, part of this fun in the sun bundle. You don't need to buy it as a bundle if you are strapped and don't want to spend $9.99. You can spend $2.99 and just buy that pail or you don't have to buy it at all. So, um, so there you go. So that's tomorrow. That's on tap with tomorrow. And I will put my affiliate link, um, in there. So, so that is an example of an outside designer that you have to actually bring into design space, upload into design space. This one here, the today's one, Rob and Bob is something that's already in design space. And there are some known, um, designers in design space, um, like Natalie Milan and uh, 
DJ Inkers, and uh, so there, there are a number, and I'm just forgetting. Anna Griffin, um, Leah, Leah Griffith, those are designers that work mostly in just in design space. They might have their own thing going on, like Anna Griffin has her own thing going on, but all of her files are actually part of design space, and they're free. Okay, that does not mean that these are licensed. So if you wanted to um, make these and sell them, which some people do, um, you have what's called an angel policy in Cricut. Um, that means you can make as much as you want from those images unless they're licensed, which license would can include like Sanrio. Disney, Marvel, Warner Brothers, all of those. So there's differences in files. Those are generally not in design space free as the access, okay? But this one is, and it's a really adorable file. It's um, It was originally uh, designed as a Mother's Day card, and I changed it up. I'm going to ungroup it here. I changed it up simply by removing the mother or mom that was here and adding this little friends bit. Um, and I'm going to show you how I did this from the very beginning. It comes with an envelope and I do want to talk about envelopes. Okay. So, um, I went to images and I, you can either, you can go to image sets if you want, and you can just type in the name Rob or Bob. And here are all our friend our our files from Rob and Bob. They have like I think several dozen um images or actual cards um that are Christmas and you know winter holiday related. Now almost all of the Rob and Bob uh, images are free to use, um, except for this one. I don't know why, but this infusible ink blank designs are not free. So, hmm, go figure. But um, other than that, they have a wedding a wedding group that does a lot of drawing and that might look really good with foil. So we can maybe play around with that. They have some print and cut. They have lots of Halloween things. But today we're going to go to one of my favorites called the best of Rob and Bob. You notice it has like the little ice cream cone. We did that um, for our ice cream loving president uh, back in January or February. Um, there are so, it's, it's, this is a hodgepodge. There's so many cards in here. It's very easy to overlook. So there's some that are just birthday, some that's Christmas, Halloween, uh, say, uh, what's it called? Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, um, winter, and just, because Thanksgiving, I mentioned that. Okay. And there's also a couple of really cool uh, projects in here as well. So I really like this set. And this is where I found this image, right? So I'm going to pull this into design space and show you what it looks like. So when it comes in, it has this little mom thing on there. But I don't want to um, have the mom thing, not for nothing. I just figured I would do something that said friends. And the reason being is I have a friend who loves sunflowers, okay? So I ungrouped it and I take off this mom thing. I like this whole design and I'm just going to show you how this design is. So here is the front and this is going to be the inside. You can change this uh, love you a bunch if you want to something more appropriate to you. Um, but so this card consists of, it's a square card and you see it has a little cutout right here. And that is so that this can go in the back and it uh, is a stock. Okay. And then the flower consists of these three pieces, which is really cute. And then there are two leaves like this. Now, personally, um, I, I understand the aesthetic, but for my friend who loves sunflowers, she's very traditional. So I wanted to change up some of the coloring here. So I can do that simply by um, selecting that image. And I'm going to actually use browns because uh, that's sort of more um, 
that's sort of more sunflower-y, right? So I'm going to change these black to brown. Um, and then I'm also going to include a um, green in there because sunflowers are quite green. So I'm going to change the other leaves uh, to a kind of a dark green. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, I don't have to worry about this cutout because remember, I... I uh, change that color. So now this is what it's going to look like. Um, changing colors is for you to understand and conceptualize. So some people might say, well, you could just change the colors. and But I like to look at it and see how it's going to look. And for me, um, just sort of changing the colors might be helpful. This will go along with our yellow, but I do notice that this yellow is a separate color yellow. And how do I know that? So let's go if you if you suspect it is and you want to um, use the least amount of materials possible you're going to come up here to color sync okay color sync and up oh, I can see here that my yellows they just look different but they are actually the same color okay and my envelope and this mom thing is, are the same color as well that's not going to be the way that we go with this, uh, but this would fit on one page. The reason I'm going to cut out the envelope in paper, not cardstock, so that the the uh, mail won't be, you know, it won't be over like the limit what you can mail. Okay, so I want to remove mom, so we can just delete that. Okay, and now I'm going back to design space and I'm going to go back to the general design space and um, my friend Linda, um, uh, she's my friend. So I figured I would put friends in there and so I'm going to grab uh, a small graphic and I found, which one here? I found this one here, which is a design space image. You see it has an A on there, meaning it is free if you are a design space customer. There's also this one, which is, I think I use this one actually. But you can decide what you want, pull both of those in and um, resize and sort of position so that you can kind of get an idea of what you want to do. So here is my friend's one. Immediately, I'm going to turn it to brown so that I can look and sort of see what I'm doing here. So here's our card. I have to make it smaller, and I think it would be nice if it were sort of sized um, and sort of put on a tilt because the way that this card works would look nice. And so I think that that's cool. I can also do that here, change the color to brown and resize it. So we can use either or resize it, sort of tilt it a little bit and there. Now, when I cut out this card, I'm actually going to cut out the friends thing in vinyl because I find with these designs, cutting out with vinyl is so much easier. And when I put it together, I'm going to show you uh, that I did that. Now, that might mean that you want to change the actual brown because when you go to make it, let's make this, you will see that the friends comes uh, on the brown coloring and we want to put it separate because we're going to use a different material. So all that's super easy to do. All we need to do is change it to a different color brown. Maybe this. I don't know if this is a different color brown. Uh, let's choose this one. And then when we go to make it, you will see that we're doing on the mat, you will see that it is no longer here. So, and you'll see it down here, which actually doesn't work for me either, but <laughs> but I have to just change the color to something altogether different. Why don't I just choose black? Because I know that I'm going to use brown vinyl, but I don't, I want to use, uh, I want to use the brown. So there we go. All right. And so when I go to makeup, after I say that I'm going to do this on the mat, 
um, here is my friends and it's going to cut out separately. That's what I wanted to achieve. Okay. So before, and I'm not going to cut this out for you because it's super easy, but I am going to show you how to weed that little bit and then put it together. But before we get to that, I wanted to talk about something um, about envelopes, okay? So this envelope is part of the file. But yesterday when we were doing cards from the Life's a Beach um, design uh, image set, we we picked out a square envelope, okay? So let me just move all this stuff because we're going to go looking again for this envelope. So we went to images and we just typed in square envelope. And some of these square envelopes, see if I can find the one we found. Okay, so... The, this one here is the one that we used for that file. So let me bring it in. And I told you yesterday that what you could do here is, you know, you size it. And if you do not want these little cuts here, which I don't want, this is an old school way of indicating it's a score line. Okay. So what you're going to do um, is you're going to contour out those little cut lines and you can just do hide all contours like this and then I told you to go over here to shapes and insert score lines which is a perfectly reasonable way to do this but instead of doing that I would suggest that you uh, just get a square Okay, this is from my friend Holly. So instead of these score lines, I am just going to, so I'm going to delete my score lines here. And this is brilliant, okay? And then I'm going to go up to operation and change it from a basic cut to score. And then I'm going to size it however way I want to. And then I don't have to deal with moving all those score lines like we did yesterday. Huge time saver, especially if you have a hard time eyeballing this kind of thing. And you would need to, of course, attach it. But now um, you have very similar to this, you have an envelope. Isn't that great? I love that suggestion. Thank you, Holly. So we're going to uh, put this together now. It's going to be a nice quick um, cricket chat. So let's get down to my workspace and we'll show you. So again, I made this using paper. If you're having trouble sourcing 12 by 12 paper, I would suggest that you go to some place like Michael's or you can do this online as well. Oh my God. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, you guys, stop, 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 stop. Yes, it gets almost deafening. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, you guys. I would suggest that you go and source something like this. You will only have to buy this probably once, um, at least once a year, depending on how many envelopes you make. But I use this kind of thing to make envelopes. Now, generally speaking, I do not make envelopes that are average size, like um, A7 size or a two size because I can buy those all pre-made and they have a nice, you know, closed thing. So this I only use for something special, but it's paper and there's 180 um, sheets in here and they come in different kinds of packs. I think I mentioned it yesterday um, and buy it when it's on sale. Normally this is a, like a twenty dollars but if you buy it on sale oftentimes you can get it for fifty percent off it is not part of the Re recollection brand well it is it, this is a die cuts with a view there is a recollection branded one but um this is paper and it says right on there printed paper when we're talking about paper i often say paper instead of cardstock so don't confuse the two okay so that's what we're going to do with the sorry that's what we're going to do with the envelope and then the card we're just going to put together and we have this insert here so let's do that yeah, let's do that. And by the way, anybody's been watching all week and was wondering if I actually threw away my white for my for my shadow card. I found it. 
Um, okay, so let's start with the envelope. It's pretty simple. It's been cut out and you can't really see the score line. So what I would suggest is you flip it over where you can see those score lines and we're just going to fold at those score lines. Okay. All right. How come I can't see this one? There. Okay. So the way that it is, is as any envelope, and you can do this with a punch board and stuff like that, but there's the two le uh, left and right flaps and then the bottom one, the bottom one usually comes up and holds those left and right flaps in. Some people like to do it the other way, but I like to do it that way and it looks like a real envelope. And then this is your top piece. So when you're, the only thing I can say about this is when you are gluing, you do not want to put the glue on the bottom flap because if you do, it will stick to the inside of the envelope. That's it. That's an envelope. This is why I don't generally make envelopes because they're boring. Okay, so here we go with the card. So there's my card. We use that as I always make two. So here's the inside of the card and it is just folded. You'll notice that it is, this. Uh, Rob and Bob do, do this. They put inserts in their cards and it is smaller than the actual card. So let's fold both of those just like that. If you want to get a really nice crease, you can do this. Um, you can also close and open going both ways, okay? And actually, I think this is the correct way, okay? So the inside, we're not gonna put in there right away, but just be aware that you're gonna do that probably do that last. All right, so we have this piece, which is actually going to go here in the inside of the front, um, and that's going to cover up this cutout. So cute. And so let us just put a little bit of glue. We don't need a lot. I don't want it to kind of come spilling out to the front and it is smaller, but it will be hidden because remember we're putting this in there just like that. Okay. So turn over your card and of course I did it wrong, you're gonna do it better than me. And then, then this just becomes kind of a paper piecing. So here is here is, now, oh, can I just tell you that you could do this on the Joy, um, but you'd have to make the base parts small enough to fit on the Joy. So maybe like four and a quarter inches, um, which would be fine. This is, I think, five. I think I did it at five. So here is your flower. You can do different things here. You can use pop dots. You can embellish. You can put rhinestones and all of that. I'm just showing you the basic way of putting it together, and then you can embellish it any way you like, okay? And the way that it goes together is like this. And remember we changed all the colors to brown. Isn't this adorable? And we could also, I think what I'll do for this one is I'm gonna use these pop dots because you know how like the, the inside when it gets all stuck up with uh, sunflower seeds, it kind of is raised above the flower. That's what I wanna do. So I'm going to on one side put these little pop dots which are just simply foam, uh, bits that are shaped in round and they have this uh, adhesive on both sides so you just remove these little bits here and uh, I think I might use one more that might be overkill but whatever um, so here's four you do you. If you don't want to do the pop dots, don't do the pop dots. You know, you don't have to do it. So here we go. And then we put that here. And then we just need to, we need to just glue this on. I actually really like that. 
sorry, I dropped a piece on the ground. Okay, so we're just going to glue this. Now I use this very fine, like sort of an ultra fine tip for my glue. And you can buy this glue on Amazon. I will include the links there. A lot of people have purchased it and it's great. It's called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. Um, and it comes in like a set, it comes in a mini, but I think when you purchase it all, it comes with a couple of different tips. This is the ultra fine tip, see how small it is? Um, and that allows me to get little bit of glue. But you'll notice that I'm not using a lot of glue, even though I'm using this glue with the ultra fine tip, I'm not like bleh, putting it all on there. We are just uh, going to, you know, just a little bit. We don't want the glue to come seeping out because if it does, A, you'll have a mess on your hands and you'll be trying to get it off. And then B, um, it's, there's a potential for the paper to get uh, wavy or sort of um, like crinkly and you don't want that. Okay. So then we have our leaves, which I'm hoping I can find all four pieces. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got so like excited that I was um, ahead of the game today. Uh, I put together my project the night before, but now I can't find my. Hmm. We'll pretend like we found it, okay? But so the leaves are going to go on here. The uh, green goes on this one goes on the bottom with the dotted going on the top like this which I like and then there is a green dotted one that would go there as well but I can't find it I'll find it probably after the show and they're just simply going to get glued on here for the uh, sentiment on the outside the friends sentiment um I cut it out, as I mentioned, in vinyl. I used Cricut Vinyl Premium. Uh, you can use any kind you like. I think mine was removable. No, it was it was permanent that I got from a set that I got in a mystery box. Where is it? I forget what this is called, but it came with all these different colors, which I used. Um, and if you have been buying mystery boxes, you probably have this. So I just cut off a little strip on there and disappointed that I've lost a piece of my card, but oh well. So, all right. Just look, giving a quick look around for the actual card. And no, I can't find it. All right, so let's get on with the um, this. This is cut out and it's very, very small. And I cannot get my head in there, by the way. So, which is how I usually weed. And yes, I would normally have it on my uh, bright pad, my brand new bright pad I would use, but um, I'm not gonna do that. But what I would suggest when you're working with these small pieces is to weed so that you can kind of see you want to weed out the negative spaces first, okay? Because it's going to make it easier for you to remove this. And let me just, I'm going to get close. I know I'm off camera. So, um, I'm just, okay. So I'm just removing all of these little tiny negative spaces. That is so that when I do take um, it off of the backing, I will kind of like have an idea of where those those um, those little curly cues are and everything. So it's if you like weeding, this will be fun for you. If you don't, you can also cut it out in paper if you want, or you can use a pen and just change it to pen, okay? Uh, did I get it all? There's actually like this little baby one right here. Okay, all right, and then I am going to uh, weed the whole thing 
by doing this. Now this takes patience, folks. Do not expect it to come off like so great. Uh, I'm not, whoops, oh, here I am. I'm not like, I'm not like a vinyl person. I'm more of a paper person, but I just adore the idea of using all this vinyl that I get, um, particularly with our mystery boxes, but I have a ton of vinyl and I love the idea of using it in my cards. It makes the card look really, um, really professional in my opinion, but it does, it does get a little bit hairy when you're, when you're trying to weed it. And there have been times when I have messed it all up and, and have to go back and recut it. So if you're the same way, do not feel badly because I am the same way. And, you know, it's not as neat. You watch TikTok. I watch these TikToks, even the cricket ones. And they're like, just weed this and, and put it on the transfer tape. And I'm like, yeah, honey, it's, it's not like that. But, okay, you know, they make it seem like it's super easy. It is not. I'm going to tell you, it's not. Um, even if they call it easy weed, it's not so easy weed. Now look at this one. See how, um, how very small this is. So I am trying to get it all off correctly. Maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't. Fur. I got the R. Fur. No, I don't have the R. I don't have the R. F. R I. I don't have the R there. All right. This is what I'm going to. Is that the R? Yes, it is. Woohoo. Oh. <laughs> I woohooed a little too soon. Um, okay. So I got most of it. I might have to go back and re. F R. No, I don't actually. Look, I'm just attaching it. I did not get the eye for this. There's, is this a space that needs weeding? Is this a space that needs weeding? <laughs> oh man, I cracked myself up. I was like, oh, is this a place that needs weeding? And here we go. It does need weeding. And also the F needs weeding. I forgot about the F. All right. So suffice to say that I, if I had to choose one or the other of these uh, friends, I would probably choose the one that's not nearly as loopy because we've got this loop, which I don't even know where it goes. You know what? Actually, it doesn't go there. So, or it can be done without let me just get the inside of this F. Okay. Now, um, I didn't get the the dotted of the I. Where did that go? I may not have. Oh, well. Guys, this is why I say you're going to do it better than I. So, once we have it done... And per let's pretend that there's a dot on the eye. We're going to put a piece of transfer tape. This transfer tape, which is Cricut, can be reused. So I always, you hear, you heard me like ripping it off because I always put it on the side of my desk. Um, I have little pieces all over my desk so that I can use it whenever I need to. And I am burnishing it and then I'm going to lift it up. And turn it over upside down. I hope you can see this. And you'll see what I'm doing is removing the backing right here. And I see that it's going to give me a little trouble. So I'm going to go at it a different way. And there it is. Then I'm going to find my place on the card. Here is good. And I'm going to put it on. Now what you have to be careful of is that you're putting vinyl on paper. And so you do not want to press the transfer tape all the way down. You want to just kind of use your finger or your fingernail or something just to sort of get where this, 
the design is, okay? And then we're almost done. We just need to put in our inside of our card. Remember that we only do the the left side or the front part or whatever you want to call it but we only do this side we don't do both sides don't do what i did when i first was learning and glued the whole thing in because it causes problems with opening and closing the card make sure that you're doing it on that edge and now we have this absolutely gorgeous card don't look here because i didn't do that part but we have this out a really gorgeous card and an envelope goes in the envelope just like this and you're going to want to put either double stick tape or even glue it i'm not sure if it takes extra postage but this is mailable so um i just think this is such a sweet little card and my friend linda is going to just adore it i hope that you like it too um we're going to see you again tomorrow boy i've I, I did a good job today. Kept it under 45 minutes. Um, so, yay me. Anyway, uh, we're going to see you tomorrow when we do in the beach pail. I will um, post a link on for the beach pail. And I hope you give this a try. I'll post a link for this in um, the description of the video when I get off of the, um, the live. So if you want to just pick it up, you don't have to go searching for it or searching for the friends, okay? Thanks everybody for coming today. I hope you enjoyed today's project. We'll see you tomorrow. It's Friday tomorrow and it's 3D Friday. So um, that's why we're doing this adorable beach pail from Dreaming Tree. Again, I'll post the link for that project um in in on facebook i'll try to post it too on on youtube as well anyway thanks everybody see you all tomorrow have a lovely day oh stickers might be a good way to close this envelope i like that idea too thanks everybody take care